My name is Jack Gaylor. I work for Video Interact. This is a UK based interactive video company, uh, which, how I many it does what it says on the tin, pretty much. Uh, so we do interactive video in both your normal flat video as you would find it. And in the last few years, we've ventured into 360 VR. Uh, so I have a background in making lots of content in Lectora for a host of different companies, uh, as well as using other tools as well. So I'm very well traveled in e-learning authoring uh, so today i'm going to be showing you how we incorporate this scenario vr scenario into our award-winning fendi responsive lectora course so the principle here is taking a scenario vr package you've created and putting it inside a lectora course just to make it clear so I'm just going to run through how we did that. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in. I'll take a look after I finish my presentation. I won't answer them during it because I will get so lost and I'll, I'll forget what I've said. So <laughs> um, just to know, this is the first time I'm doing this. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right. So one moment, just getting everything set up OK. All right, let's get started. So the dynamic duo. So as an FYI, this presentation will assume you have knowledge of both Lectora and Scenario VR. Uh, if you do need a refresher on what this software can do, I recommend you check out the eLearning Brothers website after this presentation. I will also provide you with a link to a blog of this presentation. So I've taken this presentation, turned it into an easy to read blog. Uh, so you can read it again, take your time and have a go yourself afterwards. So I'll give you a link to that after the presentation. So before I get into the details, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the Fendi project we produced and why we used Scenario VR. Fendi approached us with the aim to improve the staff's knowledge of in-store health, safety and security. They wanted the learning to be engaging and easily accessible via the staff's company iPhones. So this is what we did. As the course needed to be engaging, we included a variety of video formats as seen here. Our videos also included different presentation techniques. This ranged from narration, presenters, interviews, on-screen graphics, and as we'll see, 360 VR. To combine all of the video content into one package, Lectora was our authoring, toys, authoring tool of choice. Victoria allows us to create pretty much anything, in this case, mobile specific learning content. And it worked. The course itself was a huge success and received high praise from the client and boasted some impressive numbers, along with some notable awards. Uh, after the presentation, I will give you a link to find out more about this project. Uh, so that's on our Video Interact website. So it's a whole showcase there with some quotes from the clients and some uh, videos on how everything worked. So be sure to check that out too. So let's take a quick look at the course in action. Now I did intend to do this showing my screen and playing it as basically running through the course as I was talking, but I practiced it and I could not talk and do. So I have recorded it and I shall play a few as I read and talk over it. So hopefully everyone can see this okay. So this short demo focuses on the 360 VR activity, Opportunistic Theft. In this activity, the user is tasked to find five mistakes within the scene that could benefit or encourage a shoplifter. We decided to use 360 VR for this activity as it immerses the user in an environment they know well. Where a film is usually focused on what you want the learner to see, 360 VR encourages the learner to look beyond what they initially see in their field of view. When the user finds and clicks on one of the mistakes in the scene, they are presented with audio feedback. Their find is also recorded in the progress bar below, adding one to their score for each mistake found. We also wanted a timed event to occur within the scene. This lets the user know that not all mistakes are constantly visible, but can come and go during an evolving situation. In this case, the exchanged use of the dressing room can provide the perfect opportunity for a thief. As you'll see in a moment, 
at the end of the scenario, a group is shown in Lectora displaying the user's score. In four seconds time, you will see this happen. Whoa, but how does this, how was this done? I hear you cry. Well, um, this is what I'm gonna be showing you today. So basically how we get scenario VR into Lectora and how we get them talking to each other. So Lectora knows when the scenario VR scenario has finished and it also knows the score the user got from scenario VR as well as how long it took them, how long it took for them to complete the activity and whether it was a pass or a fail. So that's what I'm going to be showing you. If I can jump to the next slide, there you go. All right, how was it built? So the process of adding a scenario VR scenario into Lectora works as follows. You firstly, you build your scenario, you publish your scenario as a HTML5 package, and then you import your scenario VR package into Lectora. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of each of these steps. So when creating your scenario in scenario VR, ensure you complete the following steps. Let's just jump into these. Step one, make use of the score variable. The value of this variable is then carried over to Lectora on completion. So what I'm talking about here is the default score variable you're given in scenario VR. As mentioned in the demo, there are five hotspots the user must find and click. So when the user clicks on a hotspot, what we're doing here, all we're doing here is adding a value of one to that score variable. So there's five hotspots to find, they can get a maximum of five. So that score can range between zero to five. The default score variable, the one you see here, is then transferred to Lectora. And when it is transferred, uh, Lectora actually creates its own variable to hold the value of this variable. I'm going to say variable a lot today. I apologize. So var variable and scenario is going to be said a lot. All right. So it transfers that variable to Lectora but it only does it when the scenario VR package is marked as complete. I'll show you how that's done in a moment. So uh, just to note, you don't have to include a score to be able to add your content into Lectora. Um, we've included this purely to aid the user's learning. So this, is, this part is optional. I'll show you what you have to do. All right, so step two, add the send completion action in scenario VR. So this triggers on done actions in Lectora, as well as carrying over those value, the values of the variables into Lectora. Again, I'll go through this in a moment. So yeah, please note that Scenario VR's default score variable is only transferred to Lectora if your scenario is set as completed by this action. In Scenario VR, you can also use the exit scenario action to trigger the on done actions in Lectora, but as this is exiting the scenario and not marketing, marking it as complete, this does not transfer the value of the score into Lectora. In this Fendi activity, completion is sent when the timer runs out or when the user finds and clicks on all five hotspots. Right, next step is publishing your scenario VR. All right. Only one step for this one. Publish your scenario VR title as a HTML package. So you can choose to have the package as scored or not scored along with entering a custom passing score. So for example, I want them to pass it if they get over five. If not, they failed, which is very harsh. So like how the score variable is sent to Lectora, the passed, failed and completed statuses are also sent to Lectora, but again, only if this send completion action is, is used. So passed and failed are used if the HTML5 publish is scored, otherwise completed is used. Right, the third point. When importing your scenario VR package into Lectora, ensure, the, ensure you complete the following steps. I mean, it does what it says on the tin for this first one. <laughs> Import the HTML5 zip file into Lectora, but then resize the scenario VR object for each responsive view. So our Lectora title is a responsive one. Uh, we've done this so 
the course is mainly accessible on the user's iPhones, which is what the client wanted. But if they don't have access to the iPhone or if they wanted to do the course somewhere else, they could easily do it on a desktop and have an experience built for the desktop or on their tablet, just to make sure everything fits in place. So firstly, you select the page where you want to add your scenario. Then you go to insert scenario VR and select your HTML5 package to import. And that's it. Once you do that, it's on the page. It will be a purple object labeled scenario VR scenario with some numbers added onto the end. And in our case, as our course is responsive, uh, I would advise resizing the scenario VR object for each responsive view. Uh, we've done this so that no matter what the device, the scenario VR content will fill the page. So they get the biggest experience, basically. There's, it's not squished down or anything like that. It's on their page, they can see everything. Uh, so really, that's you could stop here if you wanted. You don't have to do anything else. Just by doing this, you've added your Scenario VR content into Lectora, and it's done. Uh, but what we've done is gone a couple of steps further, and that's integrating the score from Scenario VR into Lectora. And we've also integrated the completion to trigger some on-done actions, which I'll show you now. So the second step is add on done actions to the scenario VR object. So I mentioned earlier that the sync completion action in scenario VR will trigger on done actions in Nectora. Well, here are those actions. For the on done actions to be triggered, they have to be added directly to the scenario VR object as seen here. The purpose of my two on done actions are to one, show a Lectora group which contains the user score and two, set the current page to complete. If you wanted to, you can add if conditions to these on done actions. So for example, only set this page to complete if the user has scored five out of five, or perhaps show a different ending screen containing uh, constructive feedback depending on the user's score. So if they've only scored three out of five, you can give them one message. If they scored one out of five, give them another. And step three, add the show score actions to display the score generated in Scenario VR. So what I'm trying to do here is simply take the value of the score the user got in Scenario VR and show it in a text box in Lectora. So before we add in these actions, first we'll need to locate and understand three variables. Uh, to access these variables, go to Tools, Variables, and then they'll in, be in the Reserved tab. So in this list, hang on, just making sure you can see these properly. Let's cut off a little bit on the left there. I do apologize. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you go just look at the bottom left one here, <laughs> it's cut off, but I'll tell you what it says. So these three variables, were created by default when you imported your Scenario VR package into Lectora. So these three variables are Scenario VR, Scenario Duration, Results, and Score. So the duration contains the time in seconds the user takes to complete the Scenario VR scenario. Result contains the result, past, failed, completed of your scenario. And the one we're after, Score, contains the value from the score variable found in Scenario VR. So on my results screen in Lectora, I want to display the user's score using a Lectora text object. To accomplish this, when the results screen is shown via an on done action, the contents of the text box is set to display the score achieved in Scenario VR as shown here. So this is these are the actions you can see at the top of the page. So top left of the page is my uh, text box object. And then these five actions below it are on show actions. Then if you look to the right of that, this is the action that's being triggered. So when the, this object is shown, set the text of this object to three out of five if the scenario the our scenario score variable is also equal to three. So I've created five actions here. Oh, sorry, six actions for each of the uh, different outcomes the user could have.
yeah, and as you can see, it, it works pretty well. What I've done there is I've I've gone on a detour of what I was going to say, but I ended up saying exactly what I was going to say anyway, just in a different way. And now I'm reading my script. I'm going, I've just said this. Now I'm just going to carry on. <laughs> so some tips and tricks. As of anything, we did learn a couple of things which I would like to share with you. Uh, so the first thing was the size and resolution of the scenario VR file. So as the users were accessing the content from their mobile devices, we had to make sure that the content ran as smooth as possible. So using the article, uh, Scenario VR 360 Video Compression Guidelines, found on the Scenario VR website, we discovered that we needed to reduce the quality of the 360 footage from 4K to HD. If we had left the 360 video as 4K, uh, the scenario would sometimes struggle to load and cause the video itself to become very choppy when viewing on mobile devices. The client also had restrictions of the size of the package that they could upload to their LMS. This meant we had to keep all resource files to a minimum. Fortunately, as we had already reduced the 360 video quality to HD rather than 4K, thus reducing the video sizes, uh, this problem had already been solved. The second thing was that we had to create a workaround for replaying this scenario in Lectora. The way we have set up this uh, activity in Lectora, it makes it impossible to reset your um, to reset your scenario VR scenario without leaving or refreshing the page. We did, however, create a workaround for this, which involves jumping to and from a placeholder page. This works okay, but a dedicated function to kind of reset your scenario VR object would be much appreciated. And the final thing was that we needed to plan the positioning of objects inside Scenario VR. So as the target device was an iPhone in portrait mode, we had to make sure everything fit on screen. As you can see here, the progress bar and timer fit perfectly on the screen, which means the user doesn't miss out on anything. And as this was the minimum sized view, uh, we, it, it meant that they, if they could see it here, they could see it on any device. And we did test this and it does work. So that's awesome. So in summary, uh, this dedicated feature to add Scenario VR content into a Lectora course is pretty awesome. Lectora actually talks to Scenario VR, giving you variables to play with. No coding needed. Uh, this easy solution enables your Scenario VR content to be a part of a much bigger learning experience. Uh, as I said earlier, it's just a couple of links for you. You can find this presentation in blog form on our transition website slash insights. You can learn more about the Fendi projects I've been talking about via our video interact showcase on this link. Uh, if you have any specific questions for me after this, uh, you can always connect with me and message me on LinkedIn or shoot me an email on here. Whatever you fancy. Uh, yeah. And that is it. Thanks, Jack. We appreciate you. Is it? Do you have any time? Do we want any Q and A for this yeah. one? Is anybody want to scroll through those uh, little chat box, or do anybody have any questions that they want to put right into the chat box right now? We have a couple minutes here for a little Q and A, if you wish. Yeah, we do have a few questions in the chat box. Uh, Winston wants to know, you mentioned some loading issues with the 4K resolution. Is there a file size you would recommend when importing from Lectora? It really depends on the client's needs. Uh, so our client, they had a really short, a really small size that they can actually upload to their LMS. So it became more of an issue for them, uh, but it really depends on your client's limit and how much they can upload. Uh, the actual reducing was, yeah, I, it really just depends on your client. You'd have to see how much they could upload. All right. And we do also have um, tech specs for Scenario VR and some recommended things on our website as well on the Scenario VR page. So that's a good source of information for those kind of questions. Jack, could you go back to the slide with your email again for everybody, just to give them all another chance 
to see that. And I also posted the link to that showcase in the chat as well. Brilliant, thank you. And how long have you been using Lectora Online? Lectora Online, I have been using for nearly 10 years now, I think. 2014, 2015, I think I started. It's not quite 10 years. Uh, but yeah, using it a lot, uh, doing a lot of responsive work with it recently. Um, as shown, integrating Scenario VR into it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's become a, a staple of my work life. It is always there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to hear. And yeah. um, when you first started using Scenario VR, what did you think about the learning curve? Was it difficult to learn to use? Did you feel like it was pretty similar to learning how to use Lectora? I think it's one of those bits of software where on the surface, it how everything's laid out, it's really simple to get started. So if you wanted to give it a trial, go for it. You can learn how to do things pretty quickly. But if you wanted to actually make your learning very, uh, not sure a better word, but meaningful and give it proper purpose, you need to look beyond the tool and for to have a good planning stage with the filming and storyboarding and getting that all right and then introducing activities into that which you build in Scenario VR. It's kind of a whole process. Scenario VR can get you going, but if you want really good, really good quality footage and film and acting or presenting, you need to see the whole picture with it. That is a great segue into our next question. What was the timeline of the development for that Fendi project? How long did you guys work on that? Fendi project? Oh, now that's a question. It wasn't too long. I'm going to say it did have a short break. I remember it was over Christmas. So there was a couple of weeks where no one was really doing a thing because they were on the holidays. Uh, I'd say two months, two, three months for everything. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Not too long. Yeah, Everybody my can create. My may be shouting at me, but I'm going to say that. I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> That's your answer, and you're sticking with it. Sticking with uh, it. We did have a question on that the replay option for those interactions you had. Is it possible to set a limitation on that when you're building it in CVR and Lectora? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, you could add a variable onto the button or the number of times they view a page. So every time they view the page, you can add one to a uh, visited variable. And if they reach, let's say, over three on that variable, you can say you've had enough attempts. This was your highest score. If you want to have another go talk to your admin or something like that. Uh, we obviously didn't want to do that. We wanted to have the learner have as many attempts as they all want and just have a good go with it. All right, and then you mentioned that most of the learners were taking this on their iPhones. Do you know what the minimum system requirements are for the end user? I know that CVR projects can be viewed um, in headsets, on desktops, on iPhones. So I think it's pretty flexible, right, for what your learner needs to have. Yeah, definitely. So Scenario VR can be accessed on pretty much anything you want. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, headsets, but desktops, tablets, phones, you just give it a test and it should work. Uh, it has the dedicated app, Scenario VR, which you can upload your course content onto and you can assign users from there. And then they can just go to the app directly and learn from that. Or if you wanted to incorporate it into other projects, as seen here, you can do it that way or publish it onto websites as a HTML package, um, lots of different publishing options. Uh, as I mentioned, there were some, wait, where is it? Let me have a find. Here we go. So here's a couple on the Scenario VR website. It shows you it's guidelines for what you can use for the size of the uh, the footage you can use on each device and what devices it's capable on uh, and it also has a section for content delivery so all of these are good to go all right we have another question coming in what was the role of the instructional designer in this project so the role of the instructional designer it was mainly to do with um 
the, the core of this project was video. So the instructional designer was a key figure in scripting everything and making sure those videos came out with the content that the learners needed to learn, but keep it engaging and in a not too long, but not again, not too short, but in that good amount of time and that it's presented well. And the fact that we use lots of different ways of presenting the content, it worked really well in the end. I think that answered the question. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think so. Can you tell us uh, from your experience, what have you seen Video Interacts clients using immersive learning for mostly? Like what types of training do you see seem to be the most successful for virtual reality and immersive learning? So at the moment, definitely health and safety. Um, but we are also doing a lot of work with the NHS at the moment. Uh, so this is for induction training and returning doctors. So putting the user into a situation where they have to make decisions and do the right thing and also observe and see what's gone quite right, what's gone right and what's gone a bit wrong. Uh, so we do have a, a good range of uses, but definitely health and safety. But we've done pretty much everything. We, we've done marketing as well. So we, we did a, a piece for a scaffolding firm to encourage uh, young people to get interested in scaffolding. So we used that by sticking a 360 camera on top of a drone and filming this huge um, scaffolding area. I forgot what it's called. My colleague will know all about it. But uh, that's on the Video and Track Showcase as well, if you wanted to check that out. Yes, and Duncan from Video Interact also posted in the chat uh, one of those health and safety courses for the National Health Service that they built recently. They took one day to film it, four days to edit it, and five days to build it out. So that's an example of how quickly you can get VR training up with Scenario VR. And kind of tagging on to that comment about the filming, if you are, if a person using Scenario VR is shooting their own live action videos, do you know what kind of legal release forms they need to give to people appearing in the videos? I don't handle that one directly. <laughs> that would be maybe, my, maybe my Duncan can answer that in the I'm chat. Sure Duncan can, yeah. Um, yeah, it really depends on where you're doing it. If it's in a closed environment, for example, uh, if, if it's a, a demo set and everyone's an actor, you don't need to do anything because they've signed up for everything and they're getting paid for it. But if you're doing it in public, uh, you need to be careful on who you're actually getting in the video. All right, Duncan is saying they have some sample forms. So if you want more information about that, you can reach out to Video Interact and they can give you some recommendations for that. Uh, we do have a question in there. Do you, how often do you see learners using actual VR hardware, like the headsets and stuff, or are most people using, viewing it as like a 360 video on their desktop? I see people do both. Uh, so for the NHS, uh, they have acquired 360 headsets, but of course not everyone can use them. So they'd have a training day where they have everyone in a classroom and they'd have the headsets there. But if they wanted to take the learning home with them, they can't take the headsets. So that's where the mobile and desktop and all these different views come into play. So that works really well, having the flexibility of it's not just going to be viewed in a headset. You can actually take it away and view it elsewhere. Awesome. And I know um, we have one of our other clients, they all sent their learners, I think the Pico headset. Mm. And then we've got other clients who do it all on the iPhone, like that Fendi course you showed. So there's a, a lot of different options depending on the company and security needs and all of those things. And let's see, in the chat, Duncan also mentioned that you can blur people out in the video if you don't have release forms for them. And we've also got some questions about camera recommendations. Christy shared a link to one of our blog posts from John Blackman about which, which camera you might want to use. There's a lot of options these days. Mm -hmm. And then one more question. 
Did the experience with this project open ideas for future projects and or techniques that you might use with that same client again or different projects? Yeah, if doing this again, we'd obviously expand more on the 360 because the client really liked the 360 aspect of it. Uh, obviously, th this was actually the first time we'd incorporated it into Lectora. So we didn't want to go too overboard with it in case it had technical issues or anything like that, but it worked so smoothly that if we were to do it again, no problem, we can add a couple more activities into there. Okay, and a question in the chat. Do you need to develop two separate projects for the VR headset and the mobile view? Ooh, good question. On the surface of it, but practically, yes. So this is because um, when you create a scenario VR scenario, by default, you'd want it to be the best quality footage you can get it to be. So 4K, everything's really sharp and shiny and brilliant, and it works great on headsets. But if you tried to run that same course on your mobile, it just wouldn't run because it's the, the quality of the footage is too high and your mobile may have issues running it and some older devices just might give up. So a practice we, um, we apply is we create two versions of the course. So once we've finished building, let's say we finished building the 4K one, the client has approved it, signed it off, great. We will then take that, create a copy of it, and then reduce the video size in that copy. So we end up with two versions of the course, one for mobile and one for 4K headsets. So the 4K headset one can be run on headsets as well as desktops quite well. And then the mobile version is what it says on, on the tin. It is for mobiles and sometimes tablets as well, depending on the capability of the tablet. Um, yeah, it, it just gives the clients an option. If the content isn't working on someone's device, you can send them to this version of the course. Awesome, that makes a lot of sense. We've got a question in the chat, I think. Um, how many active people on your team were part of the design and development for that Fendi project? So I handled the, uh, the design and development inside Lectora and Sonora VR, uh, but we had a whole team uh, for the filming at Fendi. So the team consisted of a director, two cameramen and the project manager being there as well just to oversee things and then once they filmed everything sent it over filmed everything they edited it sent it over then i put it inside lectora and scenario vr built everything around that awesome i think those might be all the questions everybody if you have any more questions you know Oh, we got another one. Uh, <laughs> they were like, no, Jack can't leave yet. Do you, do you have the storyboard from that project that you could share? Or could you tell us a little bit about how you storyboard for building in Scenario VR? Scenario VR, I always start with pen and paper. That's, that's my way of storyboarding. So pen and paper, I do just lots of different it just ends up looking like a, a mess, but I know what it means. And then I convert that into a, an online version, which everyone can make sense of. So that would either be, I space, uh, display inside a, a Word document or I add it as a PowerPoint or something like that, just to get the message across. Uh, I know there's some con uh, software out there that you can create branching storyboards for, which I've gone blank on from what they're called, but there are some good ones out there. Uh, but I always start with pen and paper for the storyboard. Um, but if there's a lot of filming to be done with it, uh, scripting is an awesome place to start. So just getting that story on paper. And then once that script has been confirmed, I can take that, see how it's going to be implemented into Scenario VR and Lectora, and then go from there. Awesome. So you're old school. You like the pen and paper. I do like pen and paper. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And everyone, don't forget this. Uh, we are recording all of these. 
and we will be posting the recordings on our YouTube next week. So if you missed part of Jack's presentation or if you wanna go eat lunch later or you have meetings you need to get to, don't worry. The recordings will be posted for you to view later. And thank you so much, Jack. I'm gonna hand it over to Mark now. Yeah, awesome. hey, thanks, Jack. Thanks, mate. Thanks for thank joining you. us here. Uh, Jack, before we, I have one more question. Oh, is he gone? He's already gone. I'm still no, Jack, down. you're still there. Oh, thank goodness. Jack, before you go, buddy, I got one more question here for you. We, we, we have part of our um, questionnaire. We asked you, what was your favorite movie? And you put Star Wars, but that's pretty broad, brother. I'm going to say, mate, that you, you, you got to, you got to identify your favorite Star Wars movie before we let you go. Oh, favorite one. Take your time. Hurry up. We got people. We don't want people to drop off here, bud. What's your Such favorite a tough one? question. I really like. I'm going to say, I'm going to be controversial, right? Please. I'm going to say Rogue One, one of the new ones. I really Rogue enjoyed one. it. Rogue One. Why would you say that, mate? I really like the classics, but I really liked Rogue One. Fair. Fair. And have you been watching The Mandalorian and all that stuff on Disney Plus? Yeah, yeah. Book of Boba Fett. Right. Right. Good. Right. right. That's my stuff. I love that stuff. I can't wait for the Anakin one. Hey, Jack, thank you one more time, brother and mate. Uh, we thanks for jumping over the pond and uh, taking a moment with us. And um, you have yourself a great day. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. All right.